All right, guys, welcome to another beer review. Uh, today's beer was one that I was actually going to keep for like a special occasion, a milestone or whatever. But um, as I'm recording this, I'm four days into my uh, self-isolation, as a lot of people are, and a lot of people might still be uh, by the time that this gets uploaded. Uh, who knows what the situation's going to be like. But um, yeah, just hearing about people who I care about at work, losing their job, uh, friends and family outside of work, you know, they're going through their own stuff. All the stuff you see in, in you know, the hospitals in the likes of Spain and Italy and just all those vulnerable people out there. And, um, yeah, it's just... I'm only four days into a very trivial um, self-isolation, let's be honest. Uh, but it's, it's really starting to uh, case my head in slightly. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself, even though I've been pretty much having beers throughout my whole isolation period. Um, but yeah, it's fucking awful times. But uh, we can all, you know, come together. It's easier said than done, though. But uh, I will be including a couple of links uh, to some very helpful organisations out there. If anybody watching this um, feels like they've got no one to turn to or doesn't want to put that burden onto you know friend or family member, which they wouldn't see it as a burden, um, but you know I've been in situations like that where I'd much rather keep something to myself or you know just put it blindly on Facebook or something like that, and people will see it that way, which I've I found out is just not the a good way to do it. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a, a link down below to a couple of really helpful um, organisations. And uh, yeah, if you, if you need them, they're there. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone is doing as well as they can be. Um, so, without any further ado, let's look at what beer we're having today. So, we are having a beer from Cloudwater. And this is a collaboration with uh, Brovery Case. And this is... Uh, the Tall Tree, which is described as the big imperial stout was brewed with our equally big friends, Case from Brovery Case. Uh, it was aged for a year in the same bourbon barrels used for Black Forest Stout, our collaboration with Lervig. The result is a smooth, opulent treat which blends sweet and sour cherry flavours with licorice, marshmallow and oak. Uh, this is coming in at 10.5% ABV in a 375 milliliter bottle. Beautifully, beautifully presented. Uh, I'm not subtly hinting for people to, to spin on it, by the way. That's just very unfortunate that I used my middle finger to uh, put underneath the beer. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Really pretty looking bottle. And uh, yeah, pick this up from... Uh, Northern Beer Temple in Wigan and um, I just hope that by the time that this video uh, is up that John um, is still able to operate uh, because it's a fantastic bottle shop John's an absolutely great guy you know great prices great range uh, loads of locally sourced beers as well uh, so hopefully after I can actually leave the house um, I'm hoping that I can actually, you know, go over to Northern Beer Temple and pick up a few more beers, or maybe stock up a little bit more, pay a bit more than I, I usually would, because uh, you know that might not make the biggest of differences, but you know, at least that's you know, money going back to him, and uh, yeah, just the the outcry um, and outreach and just the the way the communities come together has been really fantastic. It really, really has. So uh, yeah, I'm dedicating this. Not only to my own fucking self pity, but also to uh, each and every one of you guys out there. And um, yeah, all you breweries, bars, bottle shops, online retailers, um, this big push that we've been having for the past few days, some great deals as well for people who want to stock up and for people who want to get into this world. Um, a lot of local deliveries, a lot of free deliveries, big discounts. Um, it, it's. It's been, you know, a better pill to swallow for a lot of people, and uh, it's the last resort that they some have to take. But it's great to see that there there is the support out there. 
So yeah, let's get this opened and see what we get. Using uh, the bottle opener that my good friend Adam from Nersey Beers kindly sent to me, you can't get more craft than opening a Cloudwater Colab bottle with a Stella Artois bottle opener. Oh, would you look at that? I've left the, uh, the thing in. Nice pop. Nice little bit of smoke. And yeah, I do apologise about my uh, appearance. I've been more than scruffy these past few days. So, brand appropriate glassware. Look at that. It's almost like there's no carbonation at all in that, the way I'm, I'm pouring it. It's just pouring like treacle. Like oil. There's very, very little carbonation. You're not going to hear that, even if there was raging carbonation. There's like very, very light carbonation on that. Um, I don't know. Is it is it flat? I mean, it still looks really nice. It is like engine oil. It really, really is. Look at that film that it's leaving on the glass. No head, as you would expect. Pretty much jet black. Intensely black, I would say. But yeah, a little bit apprehensive, I'm not going to lie, due to the lack of um, activity, but still very much interested. So on the nose, oh, oh it's a hearty brew indeed. It's sweet, it's savoury. Definitely getting that um, bourbon. Sorry, I just sound out for a second. I see what they're getting with marshmallow. There's like a... There's that slight umami aroma coming through this. You definitely pick up the barrel. It's one of those beers that smells boozy, but without being like really overtly harsh. There's a slight tingling of cherry or berry character in there. Very subtle. It's almost got like a smokiness about it. Anyway, smells interesting. It's going to be an interesting experience. So let's see what it's like. Cheers all, and I hope you're all taking care. Wow, I was not expecting that flavour. There's pretty much no carbonation in this beer at all. That's... I don't know if this is how this beer is supposed to taste and feel. It's very syrupy, silky smooth, it's oily, it's quite dense. The light flavour starts off there. I'm basically explaining basic tasting now, aren't I, the way I'm writing this, but stick with me. You get one flavour as the beer enters your mouth. You get one flavour, it then transforms to another flavour at the centre of your, you know, your, your palate. And then on the back end, it's like completely different. It's like three distinct stages did I? I was supposed to do one, two, three, but I think I did it for every syllable that I was saying. Oh, it's so milky. It's like it's got it's got the actual consistency of skimmed milk. There's zero carb, zero carbonation on this. It's as my uh, very eloquent uh, friend Rob from Hopsing would say. It's flat as a witch's tit, quite frankly. But, it's so fucking good. So the first flavour I get is a very subtle chocolate flavour. In the mid part of the taste, there's a bit of a, a burst of like cherry or 
like berry character coming through, a little bit of a, a tart fruitiness. Almost like caramelized uh, berries. Then on the back end, you get a really nice You get a little bit of that woodiness coming through. It's so sticky on the lips. It's a very sticky beer. Not really getting too much of that whiskey in this at all. Um, I'm getting more of a, a port character as opposed to a whiskey. I don't know. This, this reminds me of one of those... You know when Brewdog did the stuff like Sink the Bismarck and they did beers at like 40%. It's got the, the feel um, of that in terms of like texture. Like a really over the top high ABV stout that's basically a spirit at that point. It's like a liqueur. It's like you've just poured like a liqueur into a glass. Lovelier licorice flavour on the inner burp then. Internal burp, I should say. Gotta define your gotta define your burps, ladies and gentlemen. That's really nice. It's unique as well. It's got a slight savoury uh, character to it. Without it, it tasted like an umami or soy bomb, which I've not had for a while. Yeah, when, when I opened this beer and poured it, and it was just no carbonation at all, part of me was like, interesting, but wow. Should it be like that? I don't know if this is what the beer is supposed to be like. Um, when was this bottled on? Doesn't really say, to be honest. I think it has been aged a little while. Yep, full bodied, slick, and viscous. I could not pick any more perfect words to put on that. Uh, aromas and flavour. Top notes of cherry, followed by root licorice, sarsaparilla, marshmallow, and oak. I got a few of those characters. Aftertaste is oak, bourbon, and caramel flapjack. Oh. Definitely get the oak on the aftertaste, I would say. Not, again, not really getting too much bourbon at all. Uh, this is so, so, so easy to drink because that ABV. Hang on a minute. I thought for a second it said 30. 0.5% ABV then. I was going like, fuck it, I've just been sipping it like it's literally milk, but now it's... Hang on, is it? I can't... No, it's definitely 10.5% ABV. Um, there's like a little fleck of like blue detailing just where the, the one is, which is... Uh, in some angles, it looks like 30.5% ABV. Let me get to the bottom of this. This is a mess of a review. Yeah, it's definitely 10.5%. I think this is absolutely wonderful. It really, really is. No off flavours whatsoever. If it has lost all of its carbonation then what you're left with is an absolutely amazing beer. And I think I paid like eight quid for this. It's more than worth the money. I really fucking love that. That is so, so good. No idea when it was um, bottled or brewed, I should say, because there's no, doesn't state anywhere on the label. But no, nah, that, that's a special beer. It really, really is. There's just something about it. 
there's just something about it that I can't put my finger on that just makes this beer just a magical drinking experience. It might not be to anyone's, everyone's tastes, but um, Tall Tree, Cloudwater and Brothery Case, I've got to give it a 10 out of 10. I'm pretty much gobsmacked by that beer. And I'm confused because I don't think this is how the beer is supposed to be. But I'm so thankful for it turning out like this or ending up like this. It was the right decision to open this bottle. It really, really was. But yeah, 10 out of 10. So if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. And what's some of your favourite beers from both breweries? Uh, what's some of your favourite collaborations that might be similar to this? What's some of your favourite Imperial Stouts? Um, is this the way the beer is supposed to be? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um, I'm going to drink this way too fast because it's so beautiful and easy to drink when it really shouldn't be. And uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff. So yeah, if you stumble upon a bottle of that, highly, highly recommend you pick up a couple um, and give it a try. Maybe put one away for a little bit longer because I think this has got um, a little bit of age on it from what I remember but that's bonkers it's absolutely bonkers and I hate that word so it must be really good if I'm actually using the word bonkers to describe a beer anyway fantastic fantastic stuff beautiful beautiful beer lovely uh, probably one of the best imperial stouts that I've had from Cloudwater and uh, I've not had enough from Case although the ones I've had from Case have been insane as well but yeah, it's what you expect when two absolute behemoths come together. And uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. So uh, yeah, as I said at the start, there's going to be links down below uh, to a couple of organisations. Um, if you need them, they're there. Um, if you don't, that's absolutely fine. Um, go check out both breweries. Go check out Northern Beer Temple. If you are in the Wigan area um, and you want to get a nice beer fix, then definitely pop in because you'll you'll come out with um some good stuff and uh yeah beautiful beautiful beer anyway i'm, I'm slightly slightly in a better mood now which um raises questions but it's not because i've had alcohol it's because i've had a really fantastic experience drinking that and uh, i could not drink another beer for the rest of the day and i'd be absolutely fine so um why am i like defending um, something I don't really need to defend because it's not an issue. I'm going... Cabin fever is sinking in and it's a gorgeous day so I'm probably going to drink the rest of this outside, have a cigarette and um, just be thankful for, for some things. Which is... Um, it's easy to forget um, the things you do have, especially at times like this. Anyway... I'm sounding like a really, really bad, like, Hallmark card. That's such an American cliche, isn't it? Anyway, why do you watch my videos? Why do you continue to... Why Why do you subscribe? Why, why waste your time watching an idiot like me? Um, you don't have to answer that, and I am very much appreciated for each and every one of you guys. And, um, yeah. So, support your local breweries, bottle shops, any sort of company that you can. Um, of course, don't put yourself out uh, when you don't need to because you need to support yourself as well at the end of the day. But um, yeah, we'll get through this. We'll definitely get through this. Um, I think we've got a little bit more resilience that we even give ourselves um, credit for. Could not think of the word then. Anyway, the worst thing about my situation right now, to be honest, is I've run out of deodorant. That's really the only like genuine problem that I have at the moment is I don't have any deodorant for the rest of these these days that I'm in isolation. I'm gonna stink. I, I was gonna do a big act in front of them, but I can't be bothered and it's nearly twenty minutes. So uh, thank you all for watching and uh hope you all take care and uh, yeah, keep drinking really good beer. Not a catchphrase.